Hey guys, what's up? It's your girl B. Welcome back to my channel and today I am doing an updated routine for my base and my brows. Along with the base and the brow routine, I'm also going to show you how I prep my skin before the makeup. This is how my base is looking like at the moment. If you've watched my makeup before versus now video, you already have kind of an idea of how I do my makeup now. But just in case you missed it, this is the detailed base routine once again. And by the way, if you don't already know me, my name is Bianca and I am a makeup artist posting all things beauty. So if that is the kind of content that you like to watch, then please go ahead and subscribe. And with all of that being said, let's start with this video. For the first time on camera, I'm going to be doing my entire base, which is including my skincare and my updated brow routine. I've just washed my face, I haven't put any other product on. I'm starting off with the toner. I do have a short video that I've put onto my channel already about how I prep my skin before makeup. But just in case you guys wanted some more details, that's why I'm doing this video. So I'm just wiping that cotton all over my face. Basically just getting rid of any excess oils. I'm an oily girl. You want to make sure that your skin is prepped with the correct skincare before you apply your makeup because sometimes you can do the best makeup but if you haven't prepped your skin correctly it will just not sit right i'm finishing up with the toner and the next thing i'm going to use is a hyaluronic essence this is the light version from hada Labo. but before that we're going to spritz my face Oh, that was so refreshing. I really needed that. If you're wondering what this is, the bottle is from Estee Lauder, but that's not what is inside the bottle. This is what's inside the bottle. This is the Hatomogi lotion. I forgot the exact name, but I'll write it down here in case you want to get it. Once I finished this, I tried this out and I loved it, but I didn't want to throw this bottle away because it has such a fine essence. Ooh, it's not like droplets on my face. It's literally a mist. So I I just finished the product for Estee Lauder and I opened it up. This is the perfect time to be doing this actually. I'm going to be refilling it. This came like a lotion pump but unfortunately it broke during its transit over to me. Fortunately none of the product had leaked out and I didn't want to go through the entire process of like a return or exchange so I just had to improvise. Just filling that up. This is the second time I'm filling this up. I'm not sure if you can see on camera how much I've used, but the product is still like until here. It is really not that expensive and it's gonna last me a long time. I think I've been using this for like three months now. So this is easily going to last me probably over a year. Now the reason I was using this to spritz all over my face before Hada Labo is because hyaluronic acid serums or essences, they're meant to hydrate you, right? But if you use them the wrong way, they can actually actually dehydrate your skin even more. Your skin should be moist before you put any hyaluronic acid serum or essence. So technically you could even use just water, but I like to use this because it gives an extra hydrating and softening effect to my skin. It has already dried down, so I'm gonna do that again. And while it's still damp, I'm gonna take the Hada Labo and put one drop on each side. The thing about these products that I've just put on, they have the consistency of water, but they are loaded with hyaluronic acid and other moisturizing properties. For someone who is oily skin like me, it's important to hydrate your face without feeling so heavy because if you use heavy moisturizers, it can tend to block your pores and also it can lead to pilling with your makeup. So I could just leave it like this, but I'm gonna take it one step further. I'm gonna go ahead with my blemish spot clearing serum this is from the ac collection in cosr x this has very calming ingredients that's used to treat acne i don't have so much acne right now but i do have a few breakouts so this consistency is very light almost like water as well it's gonna work well under makeup 
and I'm literally just putting one drop on each side and kind of spreading that out. So that seems like a lot of products but because of the thin watery consistency it doesn't feel like anything on my face. And the last part to seal all of that moisture in, I'm gonna use my favorite Iliun Soothing Ceramide Ato Gel. Oh sorry, it's the other way around. It's the Ceramide Ato Soothing Gel. This has a very light gel texture. I will admit it is quite sticky so I use the smallest amount Literally, that small amount you saw on my fingers, I'm using that all over my face. I'm also bringing it under my eyes. I'm currently staying away from eye creams because genetically, I am very prone to milia under my eyes. And so far, all of the eye creams that I've tried has given me a milia outbreak. Although there was a dermatologist that mentioned that retinol eye creams should help. So I will be getting one of those soon. We're looking very glowy. We are gonna wait for this to settle. We're not gonna go directly in with makeup. So while that's settling, I'm gonna start with my brows. And also I'm gonna go with a lip balm. You've seen this a hundred times on my videos already. I don't use this as part of my skincare technically, but when I'm prepping my skincare for filming, then I use this because it gives that little pink flush. Otherwise, I would just use like a Labello. I do have a Laneige lip mask that I use because my lips are incredibly dry. I didn't throw the cotton that I used a while ago for the toner. I want to remove any of that skincare product from my brows. My brows tend to get so oily. So when I'm putting brow products on, I want to make sure that it's on the skin itself. Otherwise, it doesn't last as long because it's on top of product. I do have an updated brow routine on my TikTok. I will be posting it as a shorts video here on my channel. But in case you haven't seen it or you want to watch it from here, this is going to be a detailed tutorial. I'm just brushing my brows upwards and sideways, kind of laying it down. There's not much to work with. I used to use pomade, pencil, powders for my brows, but now I've actually transitioned over to pen. This one's from Issy & Co. It has a brush on one side and and the pen on the other. I'm actually gonna be using two brow pens. The second one is from NYX. This is their Lift and Snatch Brow Tint Pen. On days that I want a natural look, like I'm not going full glam, then I only use this. However, for those glam days or for those filming days, then I go ahead with this as well. I want to connect this part onto my tail. So we're gonna start from that. Just like that. And then from the top of my arch until the tail, I am missing quite a bit of hair there. So I'm gonna do the same thing and connect those together. And then I'm gonna let the brush work for me and just fill that in. But I'm not really coloring it in, I'm just kind of doing hairline stroke. So you can see that we've kind of established a shape now. Now we're gonna move on to the middle and the front. You want more stronger pigment at the end of your brow always and more softer towards the front. For the front, I'm quite happy with the amount of hair that I have there, but it is quite sparse. So I just need to kind of fill in the gap. Following the direction of my hair, I'm gonna pull the pen upwards, starting from the middle and working my way to the front. I'm not worried if the pigment goes past my brows on top because we're anyways gonna clean that up later. And we're done. That is how it looks like right now. I've quickly done the other brow off camera. Look at how precise the shape is, even though I haven't used any concealer to like carve them. Before the product set, I just kind of rubbed off any excess product that was above or below. So now my brows are good to go. I usually take it one step further for glam looks. I go in with the NYX pen just to go in between those hair-like strokes that the other pen made. So this one I use more so to mimic the brow hair itself. I usually do this towards the front to make sure that it's more full and the middle as well where I've missed any gaps and if I feel like it's too intense I just tap with my finger like this before it sets and the brows are on point. Now that the brows are done the moisturizer has already settled into my skin as well so we're gonna go ahead with the first primer. If you've watched my other videos you already know what this is. This is the elf matte putty primer and I'm using my KVD brush to kind of blend that all over my skin. I'm loading the brush up and starting from the center of my face, I work my way out. This does have a white cast to it, but it blends out anyways. Also, it's under the foundation, so I don't really mind that it has a little bit of a white cast. This is going 
going to make sure that my base is mattified before putting any product on i do this also to make sure that i'm not so reflective on camera because after i've done all my skincare i am quite glowy all right i'm done with the priming of my face now we're gonna move on to corrector this is my stroke spot veil corrector in deep cc i am in love with this product literally it corrects everything and also gives me coverage and i love that it comes in a concealer kind of component with a wand because i can be very precise in where i place my corrector and this essentially also helps me lessen the amount of foundation and concealer i put onto my skin so i've put that under my eyes to neutralize the darkness i put it on my temples because i do have kind of greenish blue veins on my temples i have a pimple over here as well as some hyperpigmentation also this is usually where i go gray with foundation same thing around my mouth area and i have a lot of acne scars on the sides of my face so i've just covered the worst of them basically for under the eyes i'm using a smaller dense brush this is from kvd and i am tapping that into the darkness under my eyes for the rest of my face i'm switching the brush under my eyes i needed precision but for the rest of my face i don't really need that but for the rest of my face, I don't really need that. This is also a dent brush, so it helps pack on the coverage. I'm dabbing in the product. That's how it is looking like with just the corrector. I'm taking one pump of the foundation on the back of my hand. And this is just how I like to do my base. You don't have to follow it at all because we already put one primer beforehand. But I like to put another primer, which is a liquid, and put that onto the back of my hand with the foundation and mix that together with the back of the brush. And if you're wondering why I do this, it's because I want to be able to spread the product evenly across my face in a much more efficient, easy way it allows the foundation not to be so thick and i don't need more than one pump of foundation for my entire face this way it doesn't affect the coverage it doesn't affect the formula either because it's also a matte primer i focus most of the products on my cheeks and then whatever's left i bring it down onto my neck and you'll also notice I'm avoiding my under eye area because we've already used that corrector that has coverage so we don't really need to apply foundation underneath there as well it's just gonna be so much product built on top of each other and our under eyes is such a thin layer of skin so we don't want to overdo it my under eye surprisingly is very dry you would think because the rest of my face is so oily that my under eyes would be fine but no it's dry so I like to keep my matte products all over my face but under my eyes i'm going to use a very hydrating dewy glowy formula for the nose area i'm not just dabbing the product i'm also kind of rubbing it in because i have huge pores on there so i want to make sure that those are kind of filled in somehow whatever is left on the brush i'm also putting that onto my eyelid to unify my skin tone now that we're done with the foundation we're gonna do a little bit of adjusting the formula of this is amazing but the undertone is quite warm this is something that usually happens with my skin tone technically it is my correct shade it's just the undertone that's off so we're going to use concealer powder or bronzer to kind of adjust that this is not something that i can work with as long as the formula is good i can work with everything else now that we're done with the foundation we want to add more brightness and structure back onto the skin and any additional coverage as well for under the eyes i'm going to use nars and for the rest of my face from the same brand i'm going to use their soft matte complete concealer in the same shade starting off first with my under eyes i'm placing the concealer here in the inner part and also here in the outer part of my under eye and using a medium dense brush i'm going to buff that in i'm focusing this product right under my eyes and looking up so it's closer to my waterline and then building that outwards towards my temple my temples need quite a bit of coverage because of those veins but somehow even with the correction and even with the coverage of the concealer the foundation it still shows through because when i laugh it kind of pops out i've just kind of accepted it now going in with the matte concealer i'm dipping in and i want to give a non-touring effect to my face non 
contouring is kind of like a reverse contouring. It's kind of a more natural way to contour. So you would take the concealer and kind of highlight the areas you want to be brightened. This also works better for me in terms of coverage because this way the foundation doesn't have to be so heavy. I can just add more coverage with the concealer. I'm stopping at the point where my natural contour is gonna show through and I can see that on camera right now. It's giving a lift to my cheekbones without actually putting any contour or bronzing product. I want to kind of brighten this area down here as well where I didn't bring the creamy concealer. I'm kind of following like an upside down triangle. This way I'm kind of adjusting how golden my entire foundation looks as well. So if I look back onto the camera right now, my face isn't as golden as it was a while ago. And we're going to also apply a little bit on the center of my forehead with the same product. I'm going in with the tinier dense brush and I'm kind of pinching it so that it's more flat and we want to apply that on the nose bridge that I barely have. <laughs> this is going to give the illusion that the light is reflecting off my bridge thus making it seem like I have a higher nose bridge. Just from front though because obviously once I turn there is no nose bridge. It's basically the highlighting part of the contour and we're going to put a dot of that concealer onto the tip of the nose. Don't worry if it's not so precise because we're anyways gonna go ahead with the contouring after that. That already without the contour gives the taller bridge illusion. How I wish. And you know it's not just for aesthetic purposes that I want a higher nose bridge. I wear glasses and let me tell you it is so hard to wear glasses that keeps falling off because of your lack of a nose bridge. At one point I really did consider getting injectables in this area but I obviously didn't go through with it. We are now done with all the liquid and cream products. So next thing is we're gonna set it. Going in with my Laura Mercier pressed powder. I'm setting the under eyes first. I'm not really bringing it into my waterline because I anyways usually put a little bit of bronzer there to make sure that that's set. Otherwise, it would start to crease. Focusing the powder onto my T-zone. With whatever's left on the brush, I'm also going over my eyebrows. Just a little bit. Around my nose area especially. And also, I'm setting where I had put extra concealer. I'm actually leaving this area for the bronzer to set. I find that if I set that place and then put bronzer on top, I get ashy. Alright, we're done with the setting. We're gonna move on to the bronzing. I don't really use contour products. Contour products are more gray. They are to mimic shadow but on me it looks like dirt. It looks like actual dirt on my face. Even if I blend it, it looks like my face is not clean and I'm already prone to ashiness so we don't want to put gray on purpose. Instead, I'm using a neutral bronzer to kind of bronze and give shape to my face at the same time. I'm using a huge fluffy brush but you can see that it's very thick so it's somehow still dense. I'm tapping in onto that product and tapping off the excess. Oh my god, my baby hairs just would not stay. Back to the bronzing. I'm pushing the product in and kind of swiping upwards at the same time. This kind of disperses the product evenly and only onto the area that I want it to be at. Bringing that onto my temples and up to my forehead. Next, I'm going in with an eyeshadow brush and I'm dipping into that same product. We are gonna focus this bronzer right here on the nose bridge area between the eyes. We're gonna focus most of the product here first before blending it out. I'm also going to do kind of like a V shape on the tip of my nose and also not forgetting the sides because we want a slimmer nose. I'm looking a little crazy right now but I promise it comes all together. Now I'm tapping off whatever is left on the brush and we are going to kind of spread that product bringing that all the way down to meet that V contour on the tip of the nose and also bring it into my eye sockets. Basically going back and forth. I'm using little circular motions where I need more blending but notice that I'm blending kind of upwards. I'm not bringing it down into my eye area and we're not forgetting those outer corners. I'm not blending it inwards or outwards. I'm blending it up and down. Adding a tiny bit more product 
product I'm going across just before the tip of my nose this gives like an upturned effect on my nose and then going in with the powder brush that we had used to set the entire face I'm not gonna add any product I'm just going to blend all that in for this side I'm blending this way and for this side I'm blending that way and now it's all coming together for the blush I'm gonna use the same huge brush I used to use coral blushes that would blend into my bronzer because I just really was not into blushes before but now I kind of like that soft girl look so I'm dipping into colors like this 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 kind of like mauvey soft pink colors I'm gonna go in with this one and above the bronzer I'm going to apply that blush bringing it into my temples and a little bit into the center of my face and a little bit onto the top of my nose as opposed to having one stripe of bronzer and one stripe of blush and one stripe of highlighter we want all of that to blend together lastly I am taking this baked highlighter with the setting brush from Real Techniques I love this highlighter because it gives like a natural sheen or a glow from within and it's very easy to control so you can make it really sheer or you can really build it up to have that blinding effect I'm applying it really high almost to my eyes actually because I want to give it that lifting effect and then using the tip of the brush I'm going into the very center of my bridge and the very tip of my nose and a little bit on my cupid's bow that is how my base is looking so far i'm gonna do my eyes off camera and i'll be right back all right i'm back i've done my eyes and my lips off camera and we're gonna do the final touches you've seen me carrying this in all of my other videos and it's because the mirror is amazing i'll be doing a review about this pretty soon as well because the packaging is just on point it has a slide out brush and to put it back you just need to lift this part and put it back it also came with a sponge but that's for the entire review that I'll be doing later this is a medium to full coverage foundation powder now I initially got this for my entire face but unfortunately I got the wrong shade online as per usual so I like to use this to finish off my makeup I want to add more brightness onto these areas while kind of giving a little bit of coverage as well because by now that I finished my eyes and my lips I've already started to become a little more oily so we're gonna start with the under eyes I'm not putting it right under the under eyes just right here to brighten it up and you can already see the difference it's mattified it's smoothened out and it's brighter I'm gonna do the same thing on my forehead my chin area basically we're focusing on the t-zone area I'm putting a tiny bit on my nose I don't want to remove the powder contour and lastly, I want to make that contour a little more pronounced. So we're going to pat that product in here. Kind of setting that non-tour. And also adding some coverage because I do have acne scars here that kind of still show through sometimes. I'm just touching up on the blush a little bit. I feel like it's gone or oxidized. I am choosing a brighter shade over here. Yeah, it's much better. Also a little bit with that highlight because we had put that that mattifying powder on top and we're done and usually I would set but I'm not really going anywhere with this makeup so we're gonna skip the whole setting part however if I was really wanting it to last throughout the night and still look matte but a little bit glowy I would use this in between the layers of powder cream and liquids and then I would use a mattifying setting spray up on top but otherwise I'm just leaving it as it is so guys that is how my base is looking like and this is the end of this video don't forget to like share and subscribe to my channel i post new content every friday so watch out for that and i'll see you guys in the next video bye